It's a little dark here in my kitchen. Let me turn on the kitchen lights here. Well, that puts those on. And I got lights over the island. Let me put those on too. Look at that. Lights on the island. And I have under cabinet lights here too. Let's click this button. And those go on. This is called a Zoos Zen 32 scene controller. It can control a load, just like a regular smart switch. And that's what I have my kitchen light set up for. That's the big button. But the other four buttons can do other things. And I customized the, the lights, the indicator lights on here so that you can see they are white when they're on and they're blue when they're off. Okay, you can set them up various different ways. And this fourth button down here, well that one does something special. Let me go and open my garage. And look at that, it turns red when the garage door is open. And I set it up so that if I double click this, it's going to close my garage door. Door closed, light off. This is the coolest Z-Wave device I have in my house. It's called the Zoos Zen 32 Scene Controller. And I'm gonna tell you how I wired it and how I hooked it up in Home Assistant to do all these automations. Coming up. All right, so let's take a closer look at the Zen 32 scene controller. I have it rigged up here so that uh, I have power coming in from this power strip back here, okay? And you can see how I have it wired here. And, and this is gonna be complicated, I'll explain it in a moment, but I have it wired so that power comes in from this power strip. This is just temporary so I can play with it and show it to you. And I have this bulb over here is the load, okay? The bulb in the back is gonna be used for something else. We're gonna set one of these buttons up to work with that. But for now, this is off. I have the power strip off. I know these are light wires and they're just used for this demonstration. When I put them in the switch box, when this is installed permanently, the wires are gonna look like this, okay? These are, these are regular, this is 14 gauge, um, you know, normal household wiring. But just for this demonstration, this wiring will work fine. So let's take a look, closer look at this. Now I'm gonna say, let's forget about these two wires and just look at the ones that come in from this cord, this extension cord here, all right? Green one is the ground that gets connected to the green screw at the top. Then I've got on this side is neutral and this side is line. And so what we have here is this is the one, you, it's hard to tell, it's a black wire, but I've marked it with a white marker on there. So I know that's the neutral. Then what I've done is I've added this is going to this light over here and the white wire is the neutral and the black wire going to that light is connected to the load terminal here. All right. Hopefully that makes sense. That is all described in the documentation that comes with it. Now the cool thing about this device is that this is the, the big button here is the one that controls what's known as the relay. And the relay is the thing inside here. It's a device that opens and closes to turn on that light. All right, it's as if you flip the switch on. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna turn on this outlet strip and make sure we don't see any smoke, okay? And when you first turn it on, now I don't know why, but that one, there. When you first turn it on, they should all be white. And you can see them, they're kind of blinking or flickering a little bit because they're not on full brightness. That's just the way LEDs work. Um, on camera, they look like they're flickering, but to your eye, they don't look like they're flickering. So anyway, this is the load terminal. If I click that, it should turn on that light over there. And you can see it has a little indicator light on it. Now, by default, the way it works is when the switch is off, the indicator light is on. And I guess that's so in the dark, you can find it. So, but that is configurable. I'll show you that in a minute. In any case, that works fine. And right now, this is not connected to anything else. So it's like a standalone switch. Those four buttons at the bottom do nothing. Now, this is where you're gonna take this and we're gonna connect it to, I'm gonna connect it to Home Assistant. You may be using Hubitat or anything else, uh, Home Seer, you name it, 
you can connect it to any one of those home automation services. I'm particularly using Home Assistant here. So if we go to Home Assistant, you can see I'm going to come into my settings and devices and integrations and I'm in the integrations tab here and I'm gonna I have Z-Wave JS installed and I did that in a previous video I set up Z-Wave and Zigbee dongles in my home assistant instance I will put a link to that video down in the video description it explains exactly everything you need to know about setting up home assistant so at this point if I come into the configure tab here it has this button the button is right here. Now I'm going to click that add button and then I'm going to on the device here I'm going to click this button three times. So let's do that. Add device. It is now searching for devices. I'm going to click this three times really quick in succession. All right now what it's doing is it's asking me to enter the five digit pin and it's a pin code that's at the bottom here on this little label. I don't know if you could see that but uh, it is, let's see, what's the number here? 25769. And now it is adding the Z-Wave device. Blinking blue, it went to green. It is still interviewing the device. And now it has been added completely. Okay, so now if I come into devices here under Z-Wave, you can see it added the scene controller. And if I go into the scene controller, it has this little switch right here. The scene controller switch is really the same as pressing that main button at the top. So if I click that, the light goes on. In addition, you can see the little indicator light, whoops. In addition, you can see the little indicator light goes out whenever that light is on. And that's just the way it's configured. So how would we want to change that? Well. So if we come into the configure tab here, you can see it says that all of these parameters are available for you to customize. And you can customize them one time or you can change them as part of the, um, as an automation, which I'll show in a moment. But anyway, you can see here that it says um, for LED indicator for the relay, which is the main button, they know that they call that the relay. It says that that light is on when the load is off. So I'm going to change that to on when the load is on. And it immediately says the parameter has been updated and that light goes off. Oh, let me show it to you. That light is now off. All right, so if I click this, the light goes on whenever that light is on. So this is good in a situation where if that light is up in your attic or someplace you can't see it, you can decide if you want that light to be on as an indicator light. I like it like that, personally. That's the way my family's used to it. And now you can see there's four other buttons here and they also have the same setting, on when load is off. I'm not 100% sure exactly what that means because if I click this, the button, the light goes out, but it didn't do anything. Same thing with button number two, button number three, button number four doesn't do anything yet, but I'm gonna configure them. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna say, I, I want them always off because I'm gonna control them myself. And I'll show you what I mean by that. I'm gonna turn the light on, the first one back on. Here, let me, let me get this set up so maybe you could see it better. You see that light is on, right? All right, I'm gonna, first of all, there's a, there's a brightness setting here. So I'm gonna change this to 100%, so maybe it'll be easier for you to see. All right, that's 100% white. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm also gonna show you that you can change it to blue. And it is blue. Or I can change it to green. Or I can change it to red. All right, so four colors that you can choose here. So for that one, I'm just, I'm just gonna leave them white for now. And I'm gonna change all the brightness on here. Then the next parameter here you can see is state after power failure. Uh, it is previous state is by default and I like that. So if the power goes out, when it comes back on, whatever state it was in, 
it comes back to that state. Now, relay control is the relay built into it. Are you going to control it from the button, physical button? The local control is that physical button. Or are you going to control it through Z-Wave or both? So I have it set up by default. It is set up by uh, to enable both. All right, I'm going to change this back to on when the load is on. Okay, and you can see when I turn my scene controller on, that light goes on and the little indicator light is on as well. Okay, so that works whether I do it through Z-Wave or I do it through here. So the next thing I want to do is I've got this uh, Z-Wave smart plug here and I have a light bulb plugged into it. Let's see here. I'm going to go back to my, my devices. That's called Smart Switch 6. And if I turn that on, you'll see that light goes on. It's very bright. But that's, that's that light, Smart Switch 6. So the first thing I want to do here is I want to set up an automation that when I click button number one, it controls that light. Okay, so how will I do that? Well, all four buttons have multiple events that you can write an automation from. Key pressed is the only one I'm going to be dealing with. You can also, there's, there's the ability to detect when it's pressed twice, when it's pressed three or four times. There's also a way to detect if you push and hold it. You can set automations up the wazoo. You would need a cheat sheet to remember what each one of those button presses does. It would drive my family nuts. I don't recommend it. So it's up to you, whatever you want to do. I'm just going to do it so that when I click that button, that light goes on. All right, let's go into settings, automations, and scenes. All right, the, and you can see I have some sample automations here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new automation, which press that button right there, create a new automation. And I have to decide what I want my trigger to be. Well, my trigger is going to be when that button number one is pressed. So let's take a look at how we do this. Well, it's, it's an event from a device. The device is going to be my scene controller. And here you can see I've got five scenes. Now, it's a little odd, but the big button at the top is actually scene five. But because I'm using that for local control, I don't need to worry about it. I'm not going to use that as a scene controller. I'm only going to be concerned about buttons one through four. And they are in order from the left is one, two, three, four. That's the way they work. So I'm going to look at button number one and the value. Now, remember I mentioned before you get a bunch of events. Everything that happens with that button comes firing as an event into Home Assistant. So I just want key pressed. Now you can see key pressed two times, three, four, even five times or held down. And you also get an event when it's released. So I just want key pressed. And then I, you can add multiple triggers if you wanted to, but I'm just going to do that. And then here I'm going to say, I want to control the device. And this is going to be my smart switch six. And here the action I'm going to choose. And for whatever reason, there are on this one, there are multiple, like see here, it says toggle smart switch six. Here it says toggle smart switch six. I've come by experience that it's really the second one that I want. So whenever button number one is pressed, it's going to toggle smart switch six. So I'm going to say button one toggles the light. That's the name of my scene. And now when I press button number one, it goes on. Cool. And if I press it again, it goes off. Now, did you notice that the indicator light doesn't go on or off? And, and I get that. There's a reason for that because I said I wanted it to always be off and I said I would control it programmatically. Now, why would I do that? Well, because I have other things that could control that light. So for example, I have this, this little keypad here. So I can press a button on here and it turns that light on. So there are other ways that I might be able to turn that on. Other scenes, other automations, whatever. So I want that, that indicator light on that button to always reflect the status of that light bulb. So how would I do that? 
All right, so we're going to press the Create Automation button right there and create a new automation. Now the trigger is going to be my smart switch. And I'm gonna say at the bottom, when it is turned on, my action is going to be controlling a device and that is gonna be my scene controller and the action there is going to be to set the value of config parameter two, which is button one. Just to confuse you, parameter two controls the LED indicator on button one. So I'm gonna say that, and I'm gonna say, look, it gives you the value choices here. So at that point, I'm gonna say always on. And I'm gonna click save, which is right there. Light, uh, button one on when light on. That will turn it on. Now I need one to turn it off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say duplicate. I'm going to say when it's turned off, I want to set the value to always off again. And button one off when light off. And save that. Now let's see. Now remember, if I push this button, it turns on the light. And then the light, the button is the indicator goes on. When I push it again, the indicator is off. Now you do see the light flash momentarily. I think that's just a byproduct of the fact that I invoke the scene, but the light, that, that little indicator always reflects the status there. And I'm gonna show you, if I come over here to my dashboard, I can click smart switch six and that light is on and off. So this little indicator matches that light in the back. Not only is this device a switch that controls a load, right? But it is also four buttons that can trigger things to happen. And it's also four indicator lights that I can receive, I can update myself on status. So it's a really pretty cool and very diverse device. But, um, you know, and I really think it's gonna be helpful to have in my house because I've got a situation in my my kitchen where there's just one switch there and uh, I want it to control multiple things. I want to be able to put on my cabinet lights and I want to be able to control the island lights all from that switch and that's where I'm going to put this. If you have any questions about the Zoos Zen 32 scene controller, just leave me a comment down below. Give me a thumbs up if you like the video and I will see you in the next one. If you need shade on your deck or patio this summer, check out Toya Grid Pergola Kits. You source the lumber locally and can assemble this modular system in as little as 30 minutes. Check the video description for links to videos and more information about Toya Grid.